Our contributing correspondent Jeff Berkowitz goes in-depth with the candidates running in the 57th House District of Illinois. We'll hear from incumbent Representative Elaine Nekritz and her Republican opponent Jonathan Greenberg. This runs about 30 minutes. You're watching Public Affairs. Berkowitz is my name and politics is our game. And we will be doing lots of politics and public policy this evening because we are blessed with two really great guests, State Representative Elaine Neckritz. She is a Democrat from Northbrook. In the fifth, she has represented the 57th District for the last 10 years. We have her challenger here, Republicans. Uh, I was almost going to say Steve for some reason. My brother's name is Steve. Yeah. He must have known. Jonathan Greenberg. Yeah. There is another Steve Greenberg in the field. Anyway, so it's Steve Greenberg, the Republican from, New from Northbrook. Elaine Neckritz. Or State. Jonathan, one of the two. Right. Did I just say Steve again? Yeah, you did. It's Jonathan. I'm going to say that repeatedly throughout the show. That's okay. Jonathan Greenberg. Republican. Elaine will correct you throughout <laughs> the show. <laughs> it's, it's my tradition. Name recognition is important. It's right. important for you. Yeah, you got the yeah. last name. Right. right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to have trouble getting a word in edgewise here. <laughs> but it's Jonathan Greenberg, Republican from Northbrook, the Republican challenger in the 57th. It's Elaine Neckritz. Democrat from Northbrook. She's been there for 10 years seeking re-election. This will be your 11th year. The district itself includes Northbrook, Wheeling, Arlington Heights, Buffalo Grove. Those are the major areas. Smaller portions of Glenview, Des Plaines, Mount Prospect, Prospect Heights. Do we describe those areas as the northwest suburbs? Anybody jump in? Anybody? Anybody? It's, How I would think you describe it? I think that's... Northwest suburbs? Sure. I, when I describe it, I describe it as north and northwest suburbs. I yeah. usually do both. Okay. And uh, let, me, let me just give a brief introduction here of our guests. Our Lane Eckerts, a lot of people would know her since she's been here for, as I said, been in the, holding the office for the last 10 years. Um, Warren grew up in the Midwest, is that right? Wichita, Kansas. Wichita, Kansas. Okay. Is that like uh, Dorothy Land or what? <laughs> all right. Yeah. You, all right. You a lot of people ask me if I know Dorothy. Do I, I do not. Okay. Gymnast competed for uh, Trinity College, invited to the Olympic trials for both gymnastics and cycling. Undergraduate degree in economics and Trinity, in, in economics at Trinity and, and law degree, University of Michigan. And uh, nine years at Altimer and Gray, the now defunct Altimer and Gray. The now defunct, correct. Were you an associate there, a partner there? Uh, both. Okay. Uh, committee man, we say committee man for uh, the Northfield uh, yes, Township. Yes, you should say committee man. Life member of the Sierra Club, chair of the Judiciary Civil Law Committee, chair of the Personnel Pension Committee. That's an important position. All these are important positions where we're going to be talking a lot about pensions and what Elaine's been doing on pensions. Um, and Jonathan Greenberg, state rep, candidate Thank you. for state rep. Also from out of town, Fort Wayne, Indiana. Fort Wayne, Indiana. Born and grew up Fort Wayne. Born and raised. But your grandfather turned you into a diehard Cubs fan? He's a Lane Tech grad. All right. And uh, several years in a not for profit, five and a half years at APAC, American Israel Pacific. Public, affair, public Affairs Committee. Public Affairs Committee. Not I was a, always going to say a political action, action committee. committee. Not a political action committee. All right. Currently, uh, currently, Jonathan is director of advocacy at the Fellowship, which is an anti-poverty anti and security project group which functions across the globe. Is mm -hmm. that right? You call yourself a Mark Kirk Republican? I call myself a Mark Kirk Republican. You know, people don't use that a lot. <coughs> Have you ever heard of somebody saying he's a Mark Kirk Republican? I mean, there are, I guess. Oh, I think in the 10th district, in, the, in, in, what, in what was Mark Kirk's district, I think a lot. I heard that a lot. Yeah. 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 Okay. Teacher, youth director, and chaplain while you were in the seminary. You were an ordained rabbi, reformed. Reform. Right? Okay. Business de development professional at the Indiana Department of Commerce. Masters in public affairs, undergraduate degree, poli sci at Indiana University. Is that Indiana and Bloomington? It is. I taught there many moons ago. So, what people want to know, they're ta we're taping the show on, on August 8th, and uh, People are watching this and they're wondering, you know, what's in the world pension reform? Because they keep hearing, it seems every other day, about some egregious state employee pension issue. Somebody's gotten a tremendous amount of money. Somebody's gotten a pension where they shouldn't have. And they hear that the pension has large amount, a tremendous amount underfunding. Some would say $83 billion. <clears throat> some would call that an underestimate, depending on what standards you lose. Standards you use. Ted Dabrowski from the Illinois Policy Institute on this show said, "Well, when you throw in the underfunding for the healthcare mm -hmm. retirees, 
retirees in health care. When you throw in the new standards, which would say the $83 billion is an underestimate, mm -hmm. you may be talking two to $300 billion for underfunding. And yet, and yet, Elaine, the question is, why isn't anything going on? Because the session ended, there was no legislation. The Senate passed a bill that only covered two of the five funds. I think, I think Mike Nolan, who's a Democrat in good standing, said that bill itself would only probably deal with about $11 billion of the $83 billion unfunded issue. He voted present on it. Mm -hmm. So long-winded question, but what's going on in pension reform? Elaine Neckerts. Well, there's a lot of activity around the pension issue. Um, there were dozens and dozens and dozens of meetings, hours and hours and hours of negotiations and discussions throughout the spring session. It's been going on for longer than that, but um, there was a lot of activity around it. And uh, ultimately, at the last minute, you know, it it, uh, it fell apart over some disagreement of, over how accountable um, uh, the local school districts and the community colleges and universities should be when it comes to paying for the pen for the, the 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 cost of the benefits for their employees. I, I think that there was significant agreement around the structure of the deal itself, and that was what the, the Senate bill that you referred to. Both Senate, both Democrats and Republicans voted for that. It was a bipartisan. That basic, it was very bipartisan. The the you know Republican leader of the Senate, Christine Redonio, spoke in favor of the bill. Um, Senator Matt Murphy spoke in favor of the bill. So there was a lot of consensus around that, uh, but there was this other accountability issue that, 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 that caused things to but fall it, apart. But deal with the issue. It only covered two of the funds. There are five mm -hmm. funds. Right? Well, that's because we had this issue over the accountability. If, if we'd been able to reach some consensus on, 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 the, on the, the, cost the cost of the pensions shift. going forward, who, was, who should be responsible for that, the okay. state of Illinois or the employer, um, if we'd been able to reach okay. an agreement on that, then we would have been able to do all the, 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 the force. Because the system. cost shift relates to the K through 12 uh, teachers, teachers who teach in the public schools outside of Chicago, grades K through 12. Does it also relate to the other fund, which is the state university faculty and employees? Yes, it does. So, okay. it, so that would that would that would be the um, the downstate okay. and suburban teachers. Uh, the university employees and the community college employees. Okay. And so the two funds that it did cover were state employees and the General and Assembly. And the General Assembly. Retirement the fifth system, fund, correct. which I guess people are saying is just not going to be covered ever because it's the judges and you don't want to mess with the judges, right? Uh, I, is, I, that, is that why? Because well, there's a, some people said five funds should have been covered, and then some right, people and, tell me and, that and fifth I, fund is never going to be covered. I, I would feel exactly that way, that the judges ought to be covered, but I will tell you. Um, there was a, a, Supreme, a, a court case in New Jersey that just came down within the last week, I believe, where the judges uh, who were included in New Jersey's reform efforts somehow magically found themselves, that found it to say that that was unconstitutional as it applied to judges. That's the dilemma that we face is, you know, how, how to address the, that very similar issue that New okay. Jersey just faced. Well, Jonathan, you've heard this. You've mm -hmm. been out there working the precincts. Elaine's working the precincts. You want to replace this young lady? What is it? Uh, did you hear anything that struck you that shows a disagreement between you and Elaine? Yeah, well, you don't have to. I mean, you yeah. can say you. Agree. <clears throat> well, I'm quite that we, we disagree on the pension shift, and we can we can talk more about that. I think there's a, a failure of leadership with respect with due respect to Elaine. I think there's a failure of leadership. I think that uh, the governor appointed uh, Representative Neckerts and others uh, to a pension commission in October. It didn't meet until March. It was supposed to author a report in April, and it didn't author a report. Uh, there's the, the idea. This was the working group, right? The working group was supposed to put together the and plan. And the that working group has who are the four members? Uh, Representative Neckerts, Darlene Sanger, Representative Sanger, who is um, a Republican, who is the a Republican. From Representative Cross was on it, and Representative um, uh, Flynn Curry was on it. No, no, Barbara wasn't on it. No, okay. No, there's Lane, only one. There's only, there's only one, one, one representative from each caucus. So right. it was me, Representative Sanger, okay. um, Senator Bill Brady, and Senator Mike Nolan. Okay. And those four people have been working, doing a lot. Uh, Cross, is a, Cross is involved, obviously, as the Republican Well, he was on the hearing that leader. I saw, the, the hearing in March that I saw okay. broadcast live on the internet, and you okay. were sitting next to Representative Flynn Curry. Yeah, that was the Pension Investment okay. Committee. Uh, okay. But in any case, all right, I, so I didn't or mean might to distract. might have been the Pension Committee, I'm not sure. I think it was... All right, so you're saying there's a failure of leadership, and the failure of leadership you're talking about is Governor Quinn, and who else? And the, and the legislature. I think there's been a failure to Democrats and Republicans? Or just well, Democrats have been in charge for 10 years. Democrats majority. have been in charge at every level of government for the last 10 years, and it's not like this issue snuck up on us. It's not like we didn't know this was a problem. 
it's been a problem going forward. So what would you do differently if you were the state rep from the 57th district? Well, in the first place, I would push for action. I would, I would, everybody would know what I think. I think part of the problem is that we haven't had uh, a, a firm idea of what, for, for example, Representative Neckertz, I've watched Representative Neckertz on Chicago Tonight a number of times. I, I don't really know where she stands on, on what we need to do. What she basically does is summarizes other people's positions and then says that's what we're fighting well, what's about. What's your position? On what aspect? On pension pensions? reform. What would you, what would you do? Long term you, or short term? What would I be willing to set, settle for or what would I? Right now, if, I you, think were the, if you were the I state, think we need if, to, if, you, if you go to the door of somebody, if you knock on the door as you're working the walk in the precincts, as they I, say to you, what is your position sure. on pension reform? I think they want an answer in about 30 to 60 right. seconds. Long term, I think we need What's to that move, long term, I think we need to move to a 401k style system. That's my, that's my long term answer to the question. I think we need to move to a 401k style system. Uh, I think that uh, it's fair to employees. Uh, it's difficult to defraud. Okay. Uh, and it, there's a lot more you, certainty going long forward. Long term, you want to, want to move to a 401 Absolutely. Short term, what do you want to do? What do you want to do this year? Was there any legislation we that have sounded to, we good have to, to you? The, most important the, thing bill, the bill that was in the Senate. Sure, would you sure. have voted for that if you were in the Senate? The one that passed the Senate? Yeah. I, I, probably, two I probably would have voted for it, but it's insufficient. It, it, and, I, okay. and I would have said so. It, it, it only covered Why is two it of insufficient? It only covered two of the funds. And Why it didn't cover the any two other biggest reasons? funds. Any other problems with it other than it Well, it, I mean, it doesn't do a, su a sufficient, cost, uh, sufficient job of controlling costs. I mean, if, you're, if, you're, if what we're talking what about did here it is do? a need did to control Did it reduce the cost of living adjustment? That was one option. Is that no? That was one did of the, the options. Did the bill do that? It was one of the options that. It, it, look, part of the problem is the Democratic model on this issue has been offer and acceptance. Uh, that we we can't just lower costs. We have to offer public employees uh, a couple of different options. Um, it doesn't do a good enough job of controlling costs. If they want to offer keep, people, what do you? What's the? What's the okay. if, if you offer people uh, the opportunity to either uh, forego uh, insurance. Uh, and, uh, and forego pensionable raises or forego their COLA, you're not sufficiently controlling costs. The, the new numbers on this are, it can, and correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the rosiest figures that I've seen are about $11 billion. It knocks off about $11 billion of our problem. And look, I don't want to be Daniel Patrick Moynihan here and say a billion here, a billion there, pretty soon it adds up to real money. I think that was Ev Dirksen. Uh, was it? Wasn't that, yeah, I, mean, I thought it was Moynihan. No, Dirksen said, a billion here, a billion there. Before Pretty you soon. know it, you're talking real, R money. real money. Yeah, that was Ab Dirksen. Well, I hate to I short change, you, I I hate to short change in Illinois, and I thought it was right. Senator Moynihan. Yeah. 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 So anyway, the, 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 the point being, uh, if you have an $83 billion, and let's face it, it's more than that uh, dollar problem, and you shave $11 billion off, that's great. And, okay. and that's, that's a good start, but it's only a start. Okay. And it doesn't do a sufficient job of controlling our annual costs going forward, which gets us to the pension shift, which I, I know Before we get to the pension about. shift. OK, so Elaine, so how does this offer acceptance work? Exactly. What this bill that was was passed the Senate, mm -hmm. a bipartisan bill, only covered two funds. Correct. It'd say to people who were retired, who were um, state employees, if you will, if you want to keep your health care subsidy, retire and benefit, then you have to accept a reduced COLA. Is that right? The concept, Does that makes the offer the acceptance? Yeah, well, Did the, I get that right? Is that the, the, is that the bargain the on the table? Concept is the concept is that are the Illinois Constitution, for better or worse, says that you cannot diminish or impair. Um, any, any, any pension benefits. And so we have to find a way to get employees to voluntarily say, yes, I will take, I'll, I'll take that diminishment or impairment. And we do that by taking something that's not constitutionally protected, their health care benefits, their pensionable increases going forward and saying, okay, I, have the, I as the legislature have the ability to take that away, but I won't do that if you'll take the reduced COLA. And so that's the, that's the, that's the, the, the constitutional Jonathan, problem. You, the I, know you're not, to make Jonathan, I know you're not a lawyer, but do you agree with that analysis that you have to do that or you risk No, the I, I don't. I, and, I'm not, and I'm not a lawyer, okay. but I do think that okay. part of the problem is, that, first of all, the unions don't agree that that solved the constitutional issue. There's going to be a lawsuit over it right. no matter what. And I think this, you know, trying to avoid a lawsuit um, uh, doesn't help us solve the problem. I mean, what are we so afraid of? Let's, let's, let's try the case. So, and, and, the, and the point of this is not to, to avoid a lawsuit. We're going to have a lawsuit. We right. all recognize okay. that. In Rhode Island, where they passed a you know, very significant pension reform, they've got lawsuits, and they don't have a constitutional yeah. protection, nor do they have any okay. statutory right. protection. So we're going to have a lawsuit o okay. over this. And what we're trying to do is give ourselves the best shot According to some lawyers, and I'm there not, I'm not going to tell you. I, there are some, definitely others that, that and, and I'm, I, you know, I don't, I don't necessarily agree that this is the only constitutional path, but we have to, you know, but in the in the interest of getting a bill passed, 
this is what this is this was the structure that, that, that we came up okay, with. Okay, and you would have voted for that bill if you were in the state senate, or if it came <clears throat> before you in the house, you would have voted for that. I, in, in the interest of moving the, the, the issue ahead, which is what I've done, you know, I, vote, I voted okay. for two Tom Cross versions, I voted for one okay. Speaker Madigan version, in the interest of moving the issue ahead, because we have to get something okay. done, yes. But you would like to see all four funds covered. Absolutely. And you favor the cost shift that Mike Madigan introduced, is yeah. that right? Yeah. And you, th what do you think of the cost shift? I vehemently oppose it, I think it's bad public policy. And why? it's also bad for taxpayers. Why, why is it bad? Well, for starters, it, it puts all of our houses up as collateral for what's essentially an insolvent pension program. Uh, so it, 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 it ties our homes to an insolvent pension system, that, which is obviously problematic. It, it has the potential. It's going to raise property taxes. I mean, it, it's just going to. And so what you're doing is you're taking the IOU for pensions out of one taxpayer pocket, and you're putting it into another taxpayer pocket. It's going to raise. And how does it raise property taxes? Well, it necessarily raises but property how, taxes. Just explain to me how. Well, so, I'll, I mean, I'll give you an example. So uh, in our district, um, the, the overlapping school districts will have, by the time the, the shift is done, and, and let's deal with, with Representative Necker's. What do you mean by the shift when you say there's a cost shift? What, is, what does that mean? Well, hold, explain, hold on, could you just I, explain to the I, viewers? I, I, I will, and, and I think we'll, we'll use okay. the bill that you've proposed, I think. Okay. So Representative Neckert's proposed shifting the responsibility for paying for teacher pensions over from the state to the, the local school districts. Uh, she proposed, it was originally, I think it was, uh, was going to be one percent, it was going to be one percent a year, there goes the bat, it was going to be one percent a year and Representative Eckert's bill changes that to 0.5 percent a year. Okay. So right 5 now. percent of payroll, I just so people understand, it's right. a, this is a percentage of payroll. So, right, so the percentage of payroll that the state now pays is about 8.9 percent. Mm -hmm. So it's going to take approximately 18 years to shift the entire burden over. But if you look at. Shift it over from the, people, from the state, people from the state pay to the school district. As a state taxpayer to what they pay as a, as, a, as a citizen in that particular school district or community college what district. What the school district, yeah, what the, okay. it's going to shift from the, the responsibility of, of, tax, of state taxpayers okay. to the responsibility of school district taxpayers. And you think that's start. wrong, although people say, you know, Speaker Mike Madigan argues, and I think the Illinois the Policy, Policy Institute, Institute who, who, a conservative organization, they the are. IPI, non and Mike Madigan, of course, not so conservative. They both argue this is an accountability thing since the school district is deciding uh, what should be, in a sense, mm -hmm. not completely because some of that's decided by the state, and yet it's being paid by somebody else. So right. people say, shouldn't the person making the decision what the pension is also pay. The short answer to that do you, question, do you agree with the that short answer to that question is yes, but the longer answer, which is important in this case, is not under these circumstances because this, the system right now is broken. Okay. Springfield broke it. It has to be fixed first. And then as part of a broader package of education funding reform, I would certainly support the people who set the rates ought to, ought to pay them. Okay. But wait, the, the, this is important okay. because we, we, I, I live in, in uh, high school district 225 and elementary school district 27. Uh, the the annual pension payment for those two school districts comes out to about $5.3 million. Uh, and if you, if you take the, the, if you divide that by 18, it's gonna be about $300,000 a year. Now the first year, that's not a big deal. But the second year, it's 600,000. The third year, it's 900,000. The fourth year, it's 1.2 million. Now, the first year, maybe they can move some things around, they can figure things out, they can come up with $300,000, but the second year, you're talking about real money. And I, don't, I simply don't believe that there's any other way that we're going to talk. Look, we live in, in a, a district where they have some of the best public schools in the country. That's why my wife and I moved to Northbrook. Yeah. And we're proud of those schools. We don't want anything to happen to those schools. We're going to end up paying higher property taxes. You have higher property taxes. You end up with depressed value. You're taking equity out of people's homes at a time when 44% of the mortgages in, in Cook County are already underwater. People the, are struggling. Let's give State Representative Neckritz a chance to respond. So let me just give you a, a very recent example that's happened in the last, as far as I know, in the last couple of weeks in, in, in Elmhurst, which is also a relatively affluent su suburban area. The school board signed a contract to award 6% annual increases for four years to those that are at the end of their contract. Now, all that does is bump up the, those, those, those taxpayers are going to pay 24% higher salaries, and then, what's hap then, then that boosts their salary by 24% and they send the bill to the state. But this particular contract says that if the state does pass along the, 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 the pension, sh the, the, the shift to that, then they're going to reopen the contract to lower salaries 
and lower the pension payment. I think that that's the, the appropriate goal that we ought to be seeking here. And so by aligning, I think from a policy perspective, mm -hmm. to align the person paying the bill with the person, you know, with paying on both sides of that equation, is in, is in the short run and the long run will save taxpayers and money and 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 we need to be moving in that the, direction certainly not in the short run look if, if you're lucky enough to have a, a contract coming up uh at, then you might be able to negotiate that with your with your uh, with your your teachers union if you're not you're going to get to year, you're going to get to year four and it's 1.2 million but over, dollars the, over the over the course of a 12 to 14 year cost shift there is going to be at least two or three collective bargaining cycles. And a lot of districts right now, when they're unsure what, what's, what's going to be coming down the pike, they're negotiating one-year contracts. And so I think that this is absolutely the kind of thing that the districts can consider when they're setting wages and salaries, which is what we would want them to do. I think it's really important well, I, that they I, be doing I, Again, long term, I agree with that. Because mm -hmm. I, I agree with the, I agree with the importance of saying, Put that aside now. The, the, but, but put that aside. Put I, I also think, that I, also think aside. I also think this is, is that important. What you're put, put this aside. No, 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 that's not what I'm saying. What, okay. what I think is important here: the, the whole purpose of the pension shift, the whole purpose of the cost shift, is to make about three billion dollars. That's currently the state's problem. Somebody anybody else's problem so they can get it off of their backs it, so they can not have to make no, difficult decisions I, I, I completely differ i completely disagree the, the purpose of it is to create the accountability that why is this that, just happening now then where was the accountability over the last 10 years there's been no accountability the interest we here have, is to get rid we of have an opportunity we have we have an we have an opportunity right now to 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 tie what i think is a very difficult vote on on the cost shift with the pension reform and make make a make a perfectly accountable you know system so, wait, so, we, so, we, so, we, so th we're, that's we're why we're, we're that's why we're looking at this so we're taking a vote together. on accountability at a time when it's easier for legislators to insist on accountability we're taking a vote at on accountability because it's because it's very much tied to the savings that we're hoping to leave on the pension system. Look, right? before, it's, let, it's me absolutely. That, let me interject to say that before this came up, it was introduced by Speaker Mike Madigan. Mm -hmm. Governor Quinn said he wanted three things. He wanted a COLA decrease, cost of living adjustment decrease. That's in that Senate bill. He wanted an employee contribution increase. That is not in the Senate bill. He wanted a retirement age increase. That is not in the Senate bill. Now, people, including the governor, are saying there's a general consensus of wanting those three things. So let me ask you two. Would you be in favor of an increase in the, in the employee contribution in each of these funds? Yes. I'm, I'm open to, to all those things. Not you open to. Would you, would, you, would you favor that? If somebody said yes, yes. or no, you, yeah. yes. And you would favor an increase in the retirement age? Yes. But I'll tell you who took that off the table? Was Republican Senator Bill Brady? So, in the interest of getting he took something those done, two things off the table? he took the, he took the, the increase in the retirement age off the table. Okay. Absolutely, he sent a letter to every school district in the state saying that we we should not be increasing retirement age. Okay. And so, Did in you the, say why? I'm curious. I mean, I, I, I didn't realize you, you'd have to have Senator Bill Brady okay. on to. But he's in, to, he was in favor of the employee contribution increase. Because again, working to your four your four person working group, mm -hmm. you and Mike Nolan and mm -hmm. Brady and and um, and Singer. Okay, mm -hmm. where you you four were in in favor of the cola modification, is that right? I, I think that there was there were parts of ev all okay. every those every, every one of those items had some had supporters in the room. I, I but not necessarily I, all four. But not necessarily all four. Correct. Oh, okay, and you're saying Brady wasn't in favor of the retirement age increase. Right. You're in favor of the retirement age, age increase. You're in favor of the employee contribution increase. You're in favor uh, of the reduced cola. Right. That was that right? Yeah. I, Let me just get John. There's a package Jonathan, that gets, that gets us to things? a solution. Yeah, Pardon? why, why yeah. don't we have that in the bill? Because because we, we, we tried to come up with a bill that would get Republican okay. and Democratic support and would pass. It got 30 votes in the Senate with with those thing, with the okay. things in it that could pass. But Jonathan, so you're in favor of those three things. Increase in the retirement age, increase in the employee contribution, reduction in the COLA. Yes. The other difference, so, and those three things you you folks are in agreement with. Can I just say what was your bill at, with okay. regard to retirement age? But just let me guess what, so, but you, you folks do disagree on the cost shift. Mm -hmm. yes. That's something you favor, Elaine Neckritz. That's something you oppose, Jonathan Greenberg. Yes. Right? Okay. But remember, I voted, I voted for legislation with the cost shift and without the cost shift in an effort to, to move something forward that, that can pass. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm open, I'm open to, to figuring out a path to yes It's on this. a bigger picture issue, okay? It's August 8th. The, the governor, I guess, has called the legislature back in session for one day on the 17th. 
I guess mainly to deal with this Representative Smith issue to mm -hmm. get him out his, because of allegations of his criminal activity and so forth. But people say, by the way, while you're down there, you've introduced two bills. You can't get it passed at that period. There's procedural things that have to take that would take longer than a day. Right. So you're going back on the 17th. You, there's no chance you're going to deal with this on the 17th. Deal with solving this problem. I don't mean you personally, but the whole le legislature. And people are saying it's not going to happen until after the election. And and some people are saying, more the Republicans, is saying that. Look, the Democrats don't want anything to happen here because labor doesn't want this reform, and the employee and and if they don't, the Democrats don't want to lose labor contributions. So after the election, they won't. They might do something, but not before. In fact, they say that's why Speaker Mike Madigan introduced the reform at that time because it would be a poison pill, knowing the Republicans wouldn't want it. Elaine, is that is that simply a partisan view, or could there be some truth to that? I think that's a, I think that's a completely partisan view, actually. Okay. Um, this the, the cost shift had been on the, in, under discussion for with the with the working group for months. So this we, we didn't agree on it, but it had certainly been on the table for months. So this was not introduced at the last minute as a poison pill. This concept that um, you know that somehow the Democrats dumped a bill on the on the at the last minute with 48 hours to go was completely false. In Tom Cross's the Republican leadership's staff had been in negotiations with our staff on that bill. Again, we didn't agree, but they knew exactly what was in that piece of legislation uh, well before it well before it came up for a vote. So I, I think that that's a it's it's a convenient. Well, Jonathan, view. are there is the Republican Party running this running on this in November? Are you running on the issue that the pensions are a mess? They're not getting reformed, and people should vote for Republicans. Is that I'm, is I'm that, running, a, clear, I'm, is that I'm, a clear thing? Are you I, saying that one as of you the go things door that door? I'm, one of the things that I'm running on is that Springfield, uh, which includes the pension mess, is a mess. That things aren't getting done. That there's a lack of leadership, uh, the, and that we need new leadership. Uh, so is yeah. this the most important issue to your district pension reform? It's a it's a piece of the most important district, yeah, or the most important issue, yes. Do you agree? The most important issue, pension reform. I think it's the most important issue for the state of Illinois. Right. That, I agree on that too. Okay. But to voters, I think it's a We're going to continue to speak issue. as the credits roll, but I very much want to thank, and I truly very much want to thank State Representative Elaine Neckritz. It's very hard to get incumbents to come on with these challengers. You did a lot before that. Jonathan, thank you so much for coming, too. I hope you'll come back. We intended to talk a little bit about guns, a little bit about abortion, a little bit about the budget and taxes. We didn't we, get We there. can talk about pensions ad nauseum. Right, I, I, but it's an important issue. It's so a very I decided important issue. I made the executive decision. Let's let it roll. We'll okay. cover one issue, one show. I hope we can get, there's a chance we can get both of you back for that to talk about these other issues. I'm happy to. Is that a yes? Well, I can't hear you. We'll, we'll see what the schedule allows. All right. Well, thank you so much for doing that. Well, real quick, in 30 seconds, more gun control, Elaine Neckritz, do we need it? You know, I mean, the Supreme Court has said that that the gun control is an individual right. The debate should be about violence prevention and is it, violence reduction. Is it reduction. crazies and guns? That's what we're seeing in Wisconsin. Crazies and uh, guns in Colorado. Jonathan Greenberg. Yeah. Jonathan Greenberg. Crazies and guns. Is that the problem? I mean, I, I wouldn't phrase it that way, but I think that's that's. Yeah, the, I agree to, with Representative Nickerson. There, there are people out there who are kind of nutty who are getting hold of massive firepower, and we don't quite know how what to do about it. And I don't know that that's a partisan issue, is it? It shouldn't be. No, we don't, we don't know what to do. We, guns are not a partisan issue in the no. state of Illinois. No, but, but they're a regional you issue. You don't want to say if somebody goes to a psychiatrist, should we say automatically they shouldn't own a gun? No. You probably don't want to say that. <laughs> but if somebody, Any more than we should say anybody goes to see a psychiatrist should be committed. But, but, but some people do have right. psychiatric problems. There should be a point where we should try to restrain them. Yeah, and if, we think, and if we think we're smart enough to identify that point, yeah. That's, t that's a tough oh, That's issue. a lot of dipping into people's medical records, right. too. So. Yeah, exactly. Taxes. Did you support the increase in the income tax? I thought it was a Would you have opposed the increase in the income Absolutely, tax? Absolutely, and I'd vote to repeal it. You're watching the Illinois Channel, an independent nonprofit corporation form to provide gavel to gavel coverage of Illinois state government and other public affairs events taking place across Illinois.